Well, good morning. It's Tuesday morning, and today we are reading from Revelation 17, verse 6b through 14. When I saw her, I marveled greatly. But the angel said to me, Why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast with seven heads and ten horns that carries her. The beast that you saw was and is not and is about to rise from the bottomless pit and go to destruction. And the dwellers on earth whose names have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world will marvel to see the beast because it was and is not and is to come. This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are the seven mountains on which the woman is seated. They are also seven kings, five of whom have fallen. The one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he does come, he must remain only a little while. As for the beast that was and is not, it is an eighth, but belongs to the seven, and it goes to destruction. And the ten horns that you saw are ten kings who have not yet received royal power, but they are to receive authority as kings for one hour, together with the beast. These are of one mind, and they hand over their power and authority to the beast. They will make war on the lamb, and the lamb will conquer them, for he is lord of lords and king of kings, and those with him are called and chosen and faithful." Well, here we see um, a couple of things. We see a great example of why someone said once that we should consider the book of Revelation Holy Scripture, but we don't need to read it because it's just confusing, okay? Um, we said before that the, the woman was the Roman Empire seated on the seven hills, which is the seven hills of Rome. And that actually is not really good code if you're trying to keep this content of this book a secret from the Roman soldier that might accost you because all over Roman literature, it was called the City of Seven Hills. And so everybody knew that they, that's the way they thought of Rome. Oh, there's seven hills there. And so um, to say the woman sits on seven mountains or seven hills, is, is, that's not difficult to figure out. What is difficult to figure out is all this stuff about the beast with the ten heads and the, the seven horns and uh, seven heads and ten horns, as if though it makes a lot of difference. Um, commentaries just go into tie themselves in knots trying to figure out which emperors um, John might be talking about there. Are we only talking about the ones that the Senate of Rome has said were gods? In that case, we're up to six, not seven. Are we only talking about, are we talking about all of them? Which case, it's more like 14. Are we talking about only the ones who reigned for a certain period of time? You just have to, it just gets crazy. And then there's those seven kings, five of whom have fallen, so they, their reigns have passed, and one is yet to come, and the one who's reigning now. So we're on the sixth of seven kingdoms. Where are you going to start? Depends on how you interpret this. Um, but it keeps saying the one who is and who was and is not and is to come, which is a kind of a parody of the Lord God who, who was and is and is to come. So um, this beast is sort of a antithesis of God, so to speak. He, he uh, shows us a picture of power, but it's not God's power. It's power that rises against God. And so um, he'll have authority and he will mystify and, you know, confuse the people whose names are not written in the book of life from all eternity. Um, and they'll make war then against the church on the Lamb. But the Lamb is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and his followers will fight for him, and they're called and chosen and faithful. So um, uh, finally, the King of Kings is going to be the one who conquers. 
popped up. Excuse me, you didn't want to see that this morning. Um, and so the King of Kings is the one who's going to conquer this uh, beast, this this evil uh, power that rules. Well, who is the beast? You know, um, pick your candidate. You know, it could be Napoleon. Napoleon was t conquering all of Europe. It must be Napoleon. It wasn't Napoleon. Well, it might be Hitler. He was evil and conquered lots of Europe. Yeah, but it's not Hitler. Well, it might have been, you know, Nixon because he was corrupt and tried to conquer things. I, I don't know what he tried to conquer, but uh, the Democrats, I guess. But uh, it could be, um, well, a friend of mine who was a, a rock rib Republican said to me um, after Reagan was shot, he said, well, if he gets very bad and they declare him brain dead and then he comes back, I'm going to start counting the days because, you know, that would mean he's the one who gets the head wound and, and comes back. Again, pick your candidate. It's evil power that rises up against uh, the church and against God and against all things Christian. And that happens in every generation. It happens all the time and every day. Um, someone said recently that all these people that complain that the church is being persecuted, we're being persecuted, Christians are being persecuted. No, they're not being persecuted, but what's really happening is that um, Christian privilege is over. You know, there was a time, it said, in Lafayette, Indiana, when the president of Purdue and the pastor at the Presbyterian Church and the uh, Catholic a bishop would get together in the pastor's office and they would decide what's going to happen in the town for the next, uh, you know, period of time. And when I was told that, I kind of laughed because I thought, well, I've never met the Catholic bishop. I've met the president of Purdue, but he couldn't pick me out of a lineup if if his life depended on it. Um, and he didn't have time for anything like coming over to my office for any reason um, I, I greeted him at the door of our church one time when he showed up uh, very late, but he showed up for a, a, a faculty member's funeral, a retired faculty member, that, and he was coming in about an hour after we'd finished the funeral and we were having the reception. And I greeted him at the door and I said, Dr. Pierce, hello, I'm David Rockmore, I'm the pastor, and we've met before. And he looked at me and says, yes, we have, as though, uh, of course we have, because everyone knows me. Uh, his his successor was not nearly as self-important, but they, all that is to the side. There was a time when, you know, they published the Sunday sermon in the Wednesday newspaper, and people cared about what the church thought. Um, people didn't do things on uh, certain days of the week because that might be church night, and if they were, had to do it, they would call the churches and say, is it okay if we have this this meeting? All of that is gone. That is That was the privilege that we had as Christians in, in our country for a long time. That privilege is over. It's gone. A lot of people want to go back to it. It's not going to happen, folks. So um, if anything, that's the persecution that's out there is simply a loss of privilege. Um, well, we can talk about that more perhaps later. For now, um, have a great Tuesday, and we'll see you Wednesday morning.